I would fear to say 98% of people are either not succeeding at all or not at the level that they want to succeed. Um, I don't desire, believe it or not, to make any more money than I make right now. That's the secret, I think, is, is developing your skills to become the person that, that you feel confident in whatever you do, you can make it work. That's what prospects want. They want a they want an agent that confidence is oozing out of their ears. If you if you don't set aside time to 100% dedicate to real estate and build your business, you're not going to have a business. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Ricky Caru. Ricky Caru from Gulf Shores, Alabama. I introduce you. He's number one, not top four. He's the man of the real estate industry. And he will get you leads. A lot more than you can fathom. Reach out to property owners and knock doors. Get the there it is. There it is. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm sorry. I, I get real excited, guys. Okay. <laughs> like, I live and breathe this stuff. I do it all day, every day. All right. All right. So let's dive in here. I guess the first question is, is have you ever wondered why some agents come out and are super successful and other agents just absolutely can't figure it out and they just keep tripping over their own feet and they just they they just can't quite make it happen when in fact everyone has the exact same opportunity everyone has the exact same you know market that we're dealing with uh, we have the exact same opportunity to speak to potential clients um Everything, everything under the sun, right? What God provide us, provides us with everything. We have every single thing that we need in terms of resources to go out here and literally build a business as big as we want. But yet, I would fear to say 98% of people are either not succeeding at all or not at the level that they want to succeed or have the potential uh, to succeed at. Um and so that's a big question, right? Is that not a good question? Why do some agents completely crush it and others just absolutely fall on their face? Well, I would, I would say that um, I've been dealing with this for a long time. I've been in real estate for 22 years now, and I've been coaching agents for seven years, really going on eight, um, which is crazy to think about. You know, it's coming up on a decade, but um, I love uh, what I do. This is my calling to help you guys uh, – you know, increase your volume, sell more properties, live a better quality of life, do better, um, all the things above. Why? Well, because I struggled and went through all that stuff and came out the other side. And I got to tell you right now, like I, I have no desire to have a bigger house. I have no desire to have a nicer car. I could, I could have nicer things, but I have no desire for it. Um, I don't desire, believe it or not, to make any more money than I make right now. Uh, I'm good. Um, and if I lost everything tomorrow, I know that I can make six figure in the next 30, 60 days um, out of thin air. Um, just, you know, uh, just based on the skills that I have developed. So I just want you guys to know, first and foremost, I'm going to give you three things to think about when building a seven figure business. This is going to this is going to be mind blowing. So get ready. And. But I will say, I just want to give you guys like a tidbit of why and where I am in life and have no desire to like, I'm going to keep doing what I do because I love to do it. And I'm going to keep pushing and, and growing and building and developing all day, every day. It's all I do. Like, if you don't do that, you're dead. But I do it for fun now. I, it's like, I don't, I'm not trying to do it so I can have a bigger house or a nicer car. And I'll tell you what the secret is behind that. It's when you become the person who's developed the skills that to the level that you know nothing can take you out you know the agents that are worried about for example the nar thing right now and the market may crash right those kind of agents who are worried that that's going to affect their business i submit to you that those agents are to a or don't have the skill level where they realize how to handle any situation and still come out on top they haven't developed the skills that give them the confidence that it doesn't matter what happens i'm going to go crush it and I, believe it or not, up until just a, just the, earlier this year, I finally found the last little piece of the puzzle to my self-development of the skills that made got me to the point where oh, I'm good. And it takes some time to build that, but that's the secret, I think, is not the material things. 
it's developing your skills to become the person that that you feel confident in whatever you do you can make it work are you looking to set and close more listing appointments that's exactly why i created the set more listing appointments challenge it's a four-day challenge and i'm going to teach you everything you need to know about setting more listing appointments and closing more listing appointments if you want to become a listing machine then you need to take the next challenge you can go to setmorelistingappointments.com or just click the link in the description i'll see you on the next challenge um so i'm gonna dive into this stuff all right so the first thing that uh th this is I, I came up with three three things and they're all c words right i like to do you know the same same letter uh when i come up with lists like this and let me share my screen and I'm going to dive on my vibe board behind you guys because I'm going to lay this thing out for you because what we're talking about is making a million bucks, right? We're talking about building a million dollar business, right? Put in the chat right now if you're on, if, if I'm, am I in the right place here? Do you guys want to look, see how to build a million dollar business? Because if you do, I'm in the right place. And if you don't, then I'm not. And if you don't, if you don't comment, then that tells me I'm definitely not in the right place. If you could on the recording, make sure that it's not showing the bar of a bunch of people and it's just showing me at the top, Kevin, that would be great. And I'm going to dive right up in here. We'll zoom out a little bit so y'all can see me and what I got going on. Oh, I'm going to raise, raise my camera up a little bit, right like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So the first thing I got for you, okay, you guys can see it. Let's see. Let me make sure. Oh, there we go. In the game, I'm going to put the chat on so I can see you guys chatting. If uh, something happens, just unmute if something weird happens. All right. So the very first thing that's holding you guys back that agents are lacking is... Number one is clarity. Clarity. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go one size smaller. Do, 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 do. Do. Oh yeah, clarity, right? And the problem is, is that no clarity on what the future looks like for you. So therefore. You feel lost, and so you have no direction, and you don't know that what you're doing day to day is actually going to get you where you want to be, which is where, well, today we're talking about a million dollars a year, okay? This is the goal, right? I'm going to lay this out for you where it's going to be real easy, and you're going to walk out of this meeting with complete clarity on exactly how to do what it is you're trying to do, okay? Um, but it's focus, right? And I said yesterday, I did a training uh, on the NAR stuff and um, you know, what, what the new world looks like and everything. And the, 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 the overlaying theme for me is, is don't lose your focus, right? This is what we need focus and people that don't succeed. I can tell you, they focus on distractions, right? And the people who succeed focus on intentions, right? Um, this is it, okay? So what, what agents lack is clarity, right? They, they go to brokers, they go to trainers, they go to coaches, and they tell them all this stuff, but they're just telling them how to close a deal, how to set an appointment. You don't have any clarity on how to build a million-dollar business. I'm going to give you clarity right now, okay? The first year, your first year in the business, all right, every lead you get is a new lead. This is year one. Every lead you get is a new lead, okay? There's no old leads, right? There's no, you know, warm leads per se. There's nobody you've known from the past except for your sphere of influence, et cetera. But even they are new leads because you haven't talked to them about buying real estate yet, right? You've, you've made friends with them. They're friends with you, their family, whatever it is, but you haven't created a, a, friend, a, a business relationship with them yet. So I want you to think about this because a lot of people, a lot of people are like, um, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm great at making friends, right? I'm great at making friends, right? I'm going to be, I'm going to do awesome real estate. Yeah. Well, 
here's the thing. There's a big difference in making friends with somebody at the ball field or at work or out at a restaurant. There's a big difference in that and actually creating a business relationship in which this person makes a decision that, hey, this could be that one agent out of 10,000 in the area that might be my agent. Or in Miami, you got what, 100,000 agents? You might – you. You got to have this is this is a whole different kind of relationship. Okay? So even though the people you know, they are new leads. This is year 1, okay? Now what happens year 2? Year 2, these new leads now become warm leads cuz now they've gotten to know you a little bit, okay? But guess what? You also continue to prospect and get new leads that year. So now look at what look at how big your business is. Your business is twice as big because your business is determined by the size of your database of people that know who you are. And so if we're growing this and now we're this size instead of this size, now we're making progress. Now, where do agents go wrong? Well, they, they, they don't stay in touch with these people, right? They don't stay in touch with these people, so they don't turn into warm leads. They have no retention in place. Retention is a weekly email, is a, is, is a weekly text, is, a, is, is postcards, is social media. But it's got to be something that stays in front of people on a consistent basis where they never forget who you are. The weekly email should be the foundation of that because, you know, algorithms change and, you know, text messaging and emails needs to be the foundation of your retention system where these people year one never forget you. Now, what happens, what happens in, in year three? So the warm leads from year one, guess what? They still with you. They're still warm leads, right? And now the new leads from year two, now they're warm leads, right? And now you're still getting new leads. Now look how big your business is, right? But if we don't have the retention in place where people from year two remember who you are, you're dead, okay? Same thing happens in year four, right? We got warm leads, warm leads, warm leads, and then at the top here, new leads. So our business is still, we still have this shape of growth over the years. And these people, these people, these people still know who we are year four, right? What happens year five? Same thing. Same thing. Now we're this big. Now we're this big right here. Now let's just say hypothetically, all we want to make is a half a million, right? And we get there year five. Well, year five, right? What we can do year six, if a half a million is all we wanted to make, we could literally work off of our database and not get new leads. But guess what? Year six, our business is still the same size as year five's business, even though we didn't prospect anymore. Now we make a half a million year six, even though we didn't prospect or add any new leads. And what happens year seven? Same thing, half a mil, half a mil, half a mil, half a mil. It's the same process as making a million dollars. You just keep prospecting to the year that you make the million dollars, and then you don't have to prospect anymore. But if you don't put the retention model and contention plans in place to make sure these people never forget you, you're dead in the water. So what do most agents' businesses look like? Most agents' business look like this, right? There's two different models, okay? Most agents look like, okay, year one, they get new leads, but they don't retain, they don't do anything to stay in touch with these people. So year two, they're working off new leads. Year three, they're working off new leads. Uh, year, year four, they're working off new leads. Year five, they're working off new leads. And people year one do not remember them. And so their business doesn't grow. Okay. Here's another model. People that do really good at staying in touch with people, right? Year one, they get new leads, right? And that turns into warm leads because they're good at staying in touch with them. Year two, they do, they keep prospecting. Okay, year three, you got warm leads. These turn into warm leads, but they quit prospecting year three. So now what happens? All they have is these people that they met year one and year two, right? And all they make is 200,000 a year, and they wonder why. Same thing with this model. They're great at closing, so they talk to people and they close deals, but all they make is 200 or 300. They can't ever get to 500 or a million, and they don't know why. Well, I'm telling you why. I'm telling you why. You have to have both systems working. New leads coming in, prospecting efforts, and you have to have a retention model, aka the weekly email, that makes sure that none of these people ever forget your great first impression that you gave them. That's how you build a million-dollar business, right? And when you have a model like this and you look at it this way, you realize what? That you have clarity. 
Now you know every day when you go to work, you're working for this five, this year six, half a million dollar year, and you know people in year one and year two that you meet are going to do business with you for the rest of your career, and you got your retention model in place. So now you have clarity on what you're doing. Make calls every day, do a weekly email, help people buy and sell. It's not, it's not super difficult. Okay, so let me know in the chat if that was, was life-changing for you, if that gave you a lot of clarity on what your business is, what you're looking like. Um, if that helped you at all whatsoever, let me know. Because if this isn't helping, uh, we, we, we can go do <laughs> – we got other things we can do, guys, right? We're here for you. I'm not here for my health. I can I can go um I can go play golf. I can go uh lift some weights, I can go jog. I do not have to be here. I'm here for you cuz this is my calling. This is what God has called me to do and I'm not kidding. This this is my assignment is to help you uh reach your full potential in real estate. All right. So clarity is the first thing. I see a couple people in the chat. Thank you for commenting. All right. So the second thing All right, the second, let's see, here we go, bam. Second thing is confidence. All right, so the first thing is clarity. No clarity, right? Don't have clarity, don't have direction. Focused on distractions instead of intention. I'm not reading books every day. I'm not personally developing. I have nowhere to go. Right. So I have no clarity. I'm lost. I'm becoming depressed. I don't know if I can make it in this business. Guys, you realize that when you build your business, th this this is the shape. Right. This is the shape. You want your business to go like this. Right. Because you got all the leads that, that come turn into new leads. Right. You want your business shape to be like this is the shape right here. When you realize that this shape is the business model and when you get to this point, you're making a million a year making a million a year right here and you make a million every year after that. I'm not speaking from theory. In 2017, I made a million dollars as an agent, right? I never prospected another day of my life. And guess what? I made a million in 18 and 19 and 20 and 21, right? I retired from sales in 22, right? I made a meal, a meal, a meal, a meal, a meal. And I didn't prospect a day. In 2000, uh, I, I did some in the first part of 17, right? But, but in 18, 19, 20, 21, no prospecting. All I did was a weekly email. And all the people from the past that I got to, that, that I built my business up to, they did business with me. And it, it's, a, uh, it's a snowball, right? It's a spider web. Like every relationship you put in place is worth 10 to 20 deals to you over the course of your career. And the more of these relationships you can put in place, the bigger your business is going to be, right? And listen, I'm not here to – look, I'll help you convert a listing today. Yep, I'll help you do that. But guess what? I want to help you build your career. I want to see you get to a million dollars a year. And the only way to do that is to understand these principles. All right, so when we're thinking about confidence, oh, this one's going to hit hard for some of y'all. Right. This is going to hit hard for some of y'all. I'm going to come back. I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to get my chair. I'm going to come right right over here. I'm going to come right here. Have a seat. This is kind of like we got to get face to face for this one. This is. All right. All right. So so with confidence. A lot of people think about confidence and they think about. I don't sound confident, right, on the phone, or I don't, I don't know if I can help this buyer, or this seller, so I don't have that confidence, right? Let me give you a different perspective. The root word of confidence is confide, which means trust. Okay, so when you when you think about the lack of confidence, what you're actually saying is that you don't trust yourself. Okay, you don't trust yourself. See, see, the only person that that knows every lie that you've ever told is you. And you've lied to yourself so many times that you don't trust you. You said, I'm gonna get up at this time and go to the gym, and you don't. I'm gonna make calls at this time of day, and you don't. I'm gonna do this and you don't. I'm gonna do that and I don't. 
And it's, it's happened so much that you don't trust you, right? You don't believe a word that comes out of your mouth. And, and so subconsciously you're like, huh, if I don't trust me, how am I, why, how in the world am I supposed to, why, why are my clients supposed to trust me? Yeah, my clients, I mean, <laughs> if I can't trust me, they ain't going to trust me, right? And that is the problem. So the first part of this, right, if you want to start sounding confident, if you want to start sounding confident and landing deal after deal after deal because the confidence oozes off of you, and that, let me tell you, that's what prospects want. They want a they want an agent that confidence is oozing out of their ears. How do you build that confidence? By doing what you said you were going to do for yourself. If you say you're going to get up, get up. If you say you're going to make calls, make calls. Don't lie to yourself, right? That's why um, New Year's resolutions are so dangerous because we make these audacious for uh, New Year's resolutions and we don't stick to them and we feel disappointed in ourselves. The next thing we know, here, we're right back where we are. I don't like big, crazy goals. I'll make them sometimes, but I learned pretty early on I'm not going to put a lot of weight on a on on like a goal like oh I want to make uh you know I want to make a hundred thousand this year right I want to make a hundred thousand this year okay um no that's fine um but I'm not gonna put a lot of weight on that back when I was selling a hundred properties a year I did that for eight years in a row as a single agent one assistant I did all the list there there was no other agents right I did all the calls the follow up the appointments the listing appointments showing the properties the closings the inspections all of it I did. And I will, I will be honest with you. When I, when I woke up January 1st, I didn't say to myself, I'm going to go sell 100 properties. What I said was, is I'm going to go out here and serve as many people as I can. And whatever comes out the other side in terms of results, it is what it is. So at, at December 31st, if I sold 50 properties that year during a time when I sold 100, I was all right with that. I didn't care because I know I did the most I could do to produce the highest amount of results. If I'm sitting around watching Netflix all day and I'm making excuses for myself and I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do and I don't hit the results, well, then, then I got a problem with myself and I'm right back to losing confidence because now I don't trust me. But I know I'm going to show up every day for me, which gives me the confidence when I speak to people. Okay? Um, so I want to give you a different perspective on confidence. When you say you have a lack of confidence, that's because you don't trust you. Right. And as soon as you start doing the things to build that trust back in yourself about yourself, then and only then can you go out here and speak with true confidence that people realize who you actually are. And it's so important. Like I'm telling you right now, this is what I'm what I'm talking about. I'm telling you is like the thing. I did the business model, the shape, make a million dollars. That that that's good. But this right here, this number two, this is this is this is crucial. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna give you guys another tip. Every time I take a sip of Fresca, I get a new listing. Mm. And an angel gets its wings every time. I need to call them and see if they'll give me some sponsorship money because I'll be pushing that Fresca. All right. So, um, so we covered clarity, we covered confidence. Let me know about confidence in the comments. Like, did that, did that hit home for some of you guys? I mean, we can talk about listings, conversions, but if you don't get this stuff, you, if, you don't, if you don't get this part down, it's a wrap. You can call it a day. You ain't going to do nothing. You ain't, I can put you in front of, you know, unlimited property owners, but if you don't get this part down, you're toast. You're going to lose all the listings. All right. Cool. All right. And then the third one, and then I'm going to get in some Q&A. All right. We'll get, get, get some questions from you guys because, you know, I'm covering some things. And, um, but I don't know what's on your mind about your business or what problems you're running into. So I'd love to, uh, to, to get some Q&A happening uh, after this last one. Okay. But we covered clarity. We covered uh, confidence. And the last C is communication. Oh, yeah. Communication. Because, and it kind of plays into confidence a little bit. 
right? I'm going to write that one down. It kind of plays into confidence just a little bit. Um, it, it, it plays into it because, because if you don't trust yourself, they hear that in your voice and they can't put the finger on it, but they know there's something off about this one. There's something not quite adding up here with this one. I can't put my finger on it, but there's something missing. And you know what it is? It's the confidence because you don't trust yourself. So build that confidence, right? This is what I want you to do. Start doing what you told yourself you were going to do and do it every single time. Now, what's that the definition of? And, and it's my core value, right? My core value, everything I stand for here is integrity. Right. I got I got six core values and this is the primary core value. Um, what is it? It's doing what you said you were going to do every single time when you said you were going to do it. That's integrity. Um, and that's me uh, since I was born. That's why I had such a successful everything business. Everything I did. Napoleon Hill said, if a man will do more than, uh, uh, what did he say? He said, he said, if a man, if a man will do more than he's paid, he will soon be paid more than he does. What does that mean? It means you got to, yeah, to add to that, what I say is the most efficient way to do more than you're paid is to focus on being the best in the world at what you're doing instead of how much money you're making doing it, okay? That's the way I've always been with every single thing that I've done. And the reason I bring that up is because maybe, uh, hopefully that, that this strikes something with you. Going back to school, right? I was in the band. I, I did art. I did uh, sports. Um, when I got out of school, I worked at, um, uh, I, I, I cooked pizzas. I was a cook in a restaurant. I served tables, um, I was a concierge. I did landscape and every single job that I had, I swear to you, I was out. I was so focused on being the best, the most efficient at those jobs. My, my bosses at, at when I was a teenager, my bosses in my early twenties, dude, they did everything they could do to keep me. They paid me more money. They would, you know, when they were laying people off, I would be the one they kept. Uh, when I would leave, they would try to, like, tell me things to keep me there. Why? Because they never seen nobody that would do it like me. Um, be on a quest to be the best in the world. It Take the money part out of it. And this plays so much into being a real estate agent. When you're with your clients, like, okay, we're, we figured out what we're going to do here. I'm going to make 2%. I'm going to make one and a half. I'm going to make three. I'm going to make four. Whatever it is. Right. And then once that's established, throw it out the window and give these people the service, the best service in the be the best agent in the world. Become become world class at whatever it is you're doing. Uh, and the only way to really do that is to focus on one thing at a time. A lot of people try to do a bunch of different things. Oh, I'm doing I'm being I'm an agent. I'm a mortgage person. I'm a title company. I'm a I'm all these things. It ain't going to work. It's not going to work. You've got to focus on one thing if you want to become the best in the world. And the only way you're going to get paid more money is to become the best in the world at what you do. Right? I was on a mission to become the best in the world real estate agent. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm on a mission to become the best real estate coach in the world. Uh, whatever I do after this, I will work to become the best in the world. So that's the mentality you have to have. Even though we know that's an unattainable, we may or may not become the best in the world. But our mentality is around that. Right? It's having that integrity and pride. But when we're communicating with our prospects, I guess the biggest the biggest uh, tip, the, the best advice I can give you with communication, is, here, here it is, treat everyone like they're friends or family, like they're close friends or family. Right. And I always I always ask agents when they're asking me about, oh, well, what would I say here? What would I say there? And I'll, I'll say, 
well, what would you say if this was your mother? Right? What questions would you ask her if she were selling this house or buying this house? You know, they're like, oh, well, I'd probably ask her this or I'd do it like this. I was like, well, why, why are you treating your prospect any differently than you would your mom? Now, I understand there could be some variations, you know, whatever. But this is, but I'm just giving you guys the framework of how I think. And I'm never trying to get anyone to do anything, right? I didn't try to get people to list with me. I don't try to get agents to sign up for my coaching at all. What I do is, is I show up, I serve, and I know that my buyers or sellers when I was an agent or, or agents now um, are smart enough to realize if this, if I am for them or if I'm not for them. Either way is great. See, that's the mentality you have to have because when you make your prospects feel like you need them, they're going to feel like they don't need you. And the more and more you make them feel that way, the more and more they're going to feel that they don't need you. And here's the facts. You don't need them. Do you guys realize how unlimited this business is? Right? We live in this, we live in this bubble where we believe that there's limited business or that we have to close this client. Do you realize that you literally can talk to client after client after client after prospect after prospect after all day long every day and never even scratch the surface? for the amount of prospects that are available to you um, each and every second of the day. You can't get to them all. You'll never, it, like, it's, it's, <laughs> it would be like you trying to drink the ocean, okay? You trying to drink the ocean. And so, yeah, you know, without going into, like, crazy, you know, training session of hours long, I mean, we could spend days on communication, um, but without, without going into all that, I'm just going to break it down in the most simplest terms, the most purest form, and that is treat everyone as if they were your mom, dad, brother, cousin, best friend from high school, somebody that's really close to you. And if you do that um, and you realize you don't need this person as a client, if they decide to use another agent, great. I don't, I don't have to spend that time on them. I can use my time more efficiently, right? The number one reason why someone chooses a real estate agent is because they like them. They like them in a business environment. They, have, they, 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 they feel like they have a friend in the business. And by the way, that was the number one reason why buyers and sellers choose a real estate agent. Um, in a survey done by NAR, it was years ago, but it was uh, overwhelmingly, it was that they had a friend, they had a friend in the business uh, with a great reputation. Um, and so there you have it. Right. Your job every day needs to be how many friends can I create in the market that own properties, own the properties that I would like to sell? How many how many friends uh, with those people can I make uh, on a daily basis and get into my retention model where they never forget who I am? They realize how different I am from the other agents because I'm not trying to sell them. I'm just trying to help them when they get ready to do something. You see, I'm not trying to get them. I, I, when you let people do deals on their terms. And you're not trying to force them to do something different than what they want to do. They love you way more. And we try to force them to do something they're not really want to do or ready to do. Um, you're kind of driving them away. And you think about expires and for sale by owners, these people that are actually thinking about selling or the property was on the market. You know, when you call it expired, well, if they're telling you they're going to hold off for now, and then you're still trying to get them to like, well, what if I could bring you an offer and all this stuff? You're kind of driving them away. A better approach is, oh, you're going to take it off the market. Well, what are you going to do? You know, what are you going to rent it? You're going to keep it for a while. You you just got like, instead of trying to fight force with force, right? Do jujitsu on them, right? Jujitsu is the gentle art, right? And it and it's going with the force. Um, I'm not going to say may the force be with you, even though I just did, because I don't watch Star Wars and stuff, but it just kind of came to mind. But my point is, is that when they're going a certain direction, take the hand and walk with them. All right, cool. Let's get in some Q&A, man. If you guys want to put your hands up on the Zoom, I am all ears for all questions about your business and what you're finding problems in. Uh, I am doing a challenge, set more listing appointments challenge, August 5th. This is going to be one for the record books. Um, I'll give you guys $100 off of that today only. Just use the code 100 at checkout, and that's at setmorelistingappointments.com. It's going to be a four-day 
you got to do the VIP to get that. And the VIP, you get to come in on a Zoom, ask questions for four days, and then I train for four days. List uh, lead gen, conversion, retention, um, and uh, video marketing, uh, et cetera. So it's, it's going to be one for the record books because we have this NAR thing coming up in the same month. And it's going to dramatically change the way we do things on the surface. But guess what? The principles never change. And I'll tell you this. Uh, just to wrap up before we do some Q and a agents are going to make more money during this. There's going to be some agents that get scared out of the business and stuff like that. But the agents that understand what, how the business works and you've got established skills and you can go out here and list properties, you're going to make more money. How is that? Why is that? Because if you if you go out here and start and take the bull by the horn, horns and start listing properties at 3%, maybe the seller offers a seller concession for the buyer agent commission or not, doesn't matter who cares. Um and you've got all the listings, guess what? The buyers are going to call you cuz they're not going to uh, uh, you know, let's just say half of them in the beginning don't want to sign something saying they're going to pay, so they're going to call the listing agent. Who's the listing agent? You are. And you'll have a clause in your listing agreement to make a little bit more for those deals that unrepresented buyers come to you. So you're just going to be crushing it, not to mention any buyers you work with have signed a piece of paper saying that they're going to pay you. Like, I don't, I don't like the non-representation part of this, but what can we do about it? Nothing. We're here to build a business. What do we have to do? Have to take advantage of whatever rules are set in front of us. We have no control of what those rules are. But I'm telling you right now, if you listen to me, keep following me, you're going to make more. If you if you apply the principles and strategies that I teach, you're going to make more money. Cool. If you guys got questions, I am here for it. Yeah, I just wrote it in the chat. Thank you so much for being here. Um, but I just wanted to ask, is your retention model, is it mostly text messages? I thought I heard three, three things, text messages and weekly emails and something else. I was just, I was just throwing ideas out there. Um mm -hmm. Um, my retention is just a weekly email on the same day of the week forever. All right. Um, I will, I will put it in the chat right here. You can see all my emails and you can use my templates. I'll put it in the chat right here. I've got a four week template system right there. Um, and you can see all the emails I did for two years. You can see all the emails. I mean, I just did one today. I'm sure you're using AI. That's a lot. <laughs> I don't use AI. No. Cool. Anybody else have any questions about their business or is there anything else I can do to help you guys? Okay. Um, somebody asked in the, the chat um, to me directly. I think they meant to direct it to you. Um, what do you think are the top three things to do when you're a new agent? Uh, okay. No, you got to put your routine in place. Number one. So you need to establish if you're a part-time agent, full-time agent, like whatever you are, you have to establish, okay, what hours throughout the week on what days I'm going to dedicate 100% to real estate. Okay. Um, if you don't do that, if a lot of agents are just like, oh, I'll do, I'll do real estate, whatever, whenever, you know, I'm working a full-time job and I'll just squeeze real estate in here and there, whatever. If you, if you don't set aside time to hundred percent dedicate to real estate and build your business, you're not going to have a business. So that's step number one is to say, okay, even if it's two hours a week, even if it's all day Saturday, cause you work Monday through Friday, even if it's, you know, I don't know your schedules, but the first thing you got to do is you got to map out and say, these are the times I'm going to spend dedicated a hundred percent, no distractions, no excuses, no negotiations on building my business. So that's step number one. Step number two is you're going to take fit. It depends on if you're full-time or part-time, right? If you're part-time and you're, and you've got like two hours a day or, you know, uh, you know, one eight hour day or something like that, what you're going to do is you're going to spend 50% of your time on the phone and you're going to spend the other 50% of your time doing your post education, your post license courses, your contract learnings, your, your MLS learnings, your brokerage, uh, you know, new agent stuff. You got to get all that post-education stuff out of the way. So you're going to spend 50% of your time on the phone doing what? Calling people to see if you can help them buy and sell real estate, right? That th This is your job now, right? You talk to people, you help them buy and sell real estate. That That's the part that everybody gets their license and they skip that part and they wonder why they don't make it. It doesn't matter if you get your leads online, guys. Zillow, um, uh, 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 social media, um, you know, 
sphere of influence, it doesn't matter where you get them. The next step is talking to them. If we don't have to talk to people, then we can just be e-commerce. We, we don't, if, if there's no, if, there, if we don't have to be in front of people and talk to somebody, then we can just sell sneakers online and not, not have to show our face. It's not the case in real estate, guys. We are a professional here to be their, you know, uh, consult, right? We're here to consult them through this, help them understand what they're trying to do and why so that we can um, put together a, a comprehensive plan to help them do whatever it is they're trying to do. So look, if you ain't talking to people about doing that, then you, don't, you won't have any business. You've got to stir the pot. So 50% of your time on the phone, the other 50% on post-education uh, activities. And then once the, all that education after license act, act, uh, education is, is over, then you're going you're gonna to swap that 50% out for marketing, right? Marketing. And you're going to leave the 50% of the phone, being on the phone. Look, I could get into a lot of specifics. If whoever, want, whoever asked that question wants to come in and um, ask a follow-up question, I'm here for it. I see, I see questions in the comments, but I'm, I'm only going to answer questions if somebody actually comes on and asks me. Hi, how are you? I actually had a question. You had mentioned that the seller would be paying 3% and then using a seller concession. Can you explain that a little bit more? Just because I have a lot of agents asking me those questions too. Well, I would be careful answering those because we're still in the early stages of this, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the fact of the matter is, is there will be no commission sharing. Um, and there may be a little bit of that, you know, in this MLS, in this area, and this state may allow of this, like you may still be able to put buyer commission on the listing agreement, and you may still be able to advertise it on your website and all these different kind of conflicting roles. But at the end of the day, they will do away with it. I mean, this is the basis of the lawsuit that we are um, establishing, you know, if it's a seller concession that the buyer can use for whatever they want, then that's all fair game. They can use it towards the buyer agent commission. They can use it towards closing costs, prepaids, discount points, title work, whatever they want. Uh, we're not telling them what to use it for. We're just saying, we'll offer this. You can use it for whatever you want, Mr. Buyer. But we're not going to say, oh, we'll take it for five and give the buyer agent two and a half. Those days are over. They're, they're said and done. So well, as long as you just don't straight up say what it's for, it, we're, we're okay in those guidelines. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm not a lawyer. I'm not your broker and I'm not your board. And I'm not your commission. So, you know, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. However, generally speaking, um, off the record, yes, you're going to um, um, take the listing side. And then like, if you want to offer some seller concessions that the buyer can use for whatever the buyer agent commission or whatever they want, it's okay to say to the, like, like the DOJ says, you can use seller concessions towards buyer agent commissions. Like they say those words. So it's not like we have to hide the fact that we're using it for that, right? What, but what we have to be careful of is, is saying that that's what it's for when we advertise it, when we're talking to people. Like it's seller concessions towards whatever the buyer wants to use that money for, right? Now, now, I'll, now I, I will say, honestly, we'll see how it all plays out. Nobody really knows, but at the end of the day, it, this is my opinion, and I'm speaking out of sh complete speculation and assumptions because we're not there yet. But just thinking about the dynamic of fiduciary duty to the seller and um, the dynamics of me getting the best deal for them and negotiating the best price, there really isn't a point in me offering a seller concession um, because I don't know what – See, because the buyer has to sign a contract with their agent of how much they're going to pay if the seller doesn't pay it, correct? Mm -hmm. So so if the buyer has signed a contract with the buyer agent saying they're going to pay them, why would I pay it if I'm the seller, number one? And number two, if that's going to kill the deal and I need to pay some, that's great, but I don't want to throw out 2% when they sign for one and a half with their buyer agent. Now I just lost a half a percent, right? right? And, and, and think about the situations where the buyer is okay paying the buyer agent fee, right? And now you put out two or three percent. You just lost your seller two or three percent, and they the, the the buyer wasn't even going to ask for it in the contract. But now you gave it to them anyway. Now I'm not going to sleep at night thinking that I did the best for my seller in, in those situations. So again, total speculation. I'm just thinking about the dynamics of me getting the best deal for my seller, who is that is who I am have a fiduciary right to. People can say whatever they want to say about what I'm saying 
uh, that, you know, I'm, I'm um, against buyer commission. No, I'm not. I'm about representing my seller to the highest. Uh, this is the, I didn't make the rules, right? The rules were forced on me, okay? But if those are the rules we're going to play by, then, then I'm going to play by them. And I'm going to go out here and crush it. And so it's like I said, the listing agents are going to make more money because more buyers are going to come directly to them. They're going to have a uh, they're going to have a a line in the listing agreement where they make a little more on those deals. So they're going to they're going to quote unquote double in. It's actually going to be unrepresented buyers. Um, say I take it at three and I get another one percent if an unrepresented buyer comes through. So I'll make more money on those deals more consistently because more buyers, especially in the beginning of this, are going to come directly to listing agents. And any buyer that I work with has sat down with me and signed a contract to pay me. So now I'm not working with every single buyer. It's beautiful, right? Anybody that says otherwise, again, I'll go back to confidence and clarity, right? You 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 don't have confidence in yourself through develop. It, no, uh, no, it's not. It, it's see, see, the reason why I don't care about buying a bigger house or, or a new car is because I'm there. I've developed myself into the person I could go buy a twice as big mansion right now. I could go buy 10 Ferraris right now. I don't have to do that to make me happy. Why? Because I've developed the skills where I know I can crush it no matter what happens. And so the agents that are standing around saying, oh, well, what about us? We're the buyer's agents. Well, Develop your skills to where you can crush it no matter what happens. You ain't got to worry about it, mm -hmm. right? Don't don't sit around worrying about you what you're missing. Look at the new rules and realize what it is and go become the person. Stop being lazy, right? Read a book. <laughs> yeah. Before we move on to the next question, I, uh, I have to put this out there now. Um, please replace numbers with percentages with X and Y. Um, for for uh, legal reasons, it's all like uh, it's all it's all like hypothetical. Like any numbers I throw out and stuff, I'm just throwing out hypothetical. As I said, like I might do this, I might do that. But at the end of the day, we weren't. It was price fixing wasn't like like there were moments in the lawsuit where it's kind of like oh six percent and you won't negotiate and stuff like that. But you know what it really was at the end of the day, Kevin? It was that we were fixing what the buyer agent was getting, and the buyer didn't have a opportunity to negotiate it and we were basically fixing that buyer agent commission the listing agent and the seller were deciding what that was going to be without even talking to the buyer or the buyer agent what the buyer agent was going to get for services they rendered to the buyer and at the end of the day that was the real problem in the price fiction as the actual price fixing problem but yeah it's going to be whatever the market is and you know you can replace that with whatever it ends up you know be in the norm two two and a half one and a half one four you know the numbers are irrelevant it's yeah it it i i uh i can't agree or disagree these are just my chief of legal rules i'm just trying to stay out of trouble no yeah. absolutely man no I'm, I'm glad you brought it up because like i'm i'm in the same boat <laughs> trying to stay out of legal trouble but i am trying to explain it in a way that people can understand um and be in the best position possible i want agents to be in the best position possible Oh, that was beautiful. That was that was a beautiful meeting. I hope you guys got a lot out of it. Um, anything else I can do for you, Kev? No, we'll uh, we'll talk about doing another another presentation here in a, in a couple of months, if that's okay with you. Absolutely, and I will be in your area Thursday. I'm speaking at NARREP. It's in Davie, and if you guys go to um, the link in my Instagram bio, I've got all the links from my upcoming events. So if you want, if anybody on the call wants to come to that event, I'd love to see you. And I'll be there next Thursday uh, to speak, to do a presentation. Excellent. So a week from tomorrow. Yeah, a week from tomorrow. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, All hey, right. man, thank you as always for your wisdom. We greatly appreciate you. And uh, we look forward to having you again, again soon in the, the next couple of months, man. Appreciate you as always. Thank, thank you so much, Kevin. Thanks you for too. having me. And have a good, have a good one, everybody. Always. Thank you, man.